What's going on everybody, LK here. Today, I want to talk about the technique that is ruining the game right now that uh, has kind of been fleshed out. So this is the PRC option select. So first, I'm going to show you what it is, then we're gonna talk about where it's useful, why are people freaking out about it, some examples from earlier versions plus other games that I've kind of experienced, and then my opinion on the whole thing. So an option select is taking advantage of the game's rules in order to create a situation where you can cover multiple options with one sequence. So that might sound weird or very technical, but it's way simpler than you think. So here's a common example that you've probably seen. So Biken is really known for her safe jumps. A safe jump is a technique where you can make reversals with, but your jump in, attack, connect in situations where you have great advantage for example after a knockdown so with this knockdown right here if i do a reversal she just blocks it no problem and if i don't block i get hit and then if i block then i just block you can use this for more than reversals as well so i'll use it for like reversal bursts Right, blue burst. So why does this work? This is taking advantage of the game's rules, right? Even though this exists in many fighting games, so if you've played one and you've learned this, then this applies to anything. Even if someone might tell you that safe jumps are fake news, this is something that just takes advantage of the fact that since we're falling, we will land because the opponent is invincible and block the reversal. So with that in mind, let's go to the new technique and see what it is and how this works. So. Here it is. That's it. I, I did it. And you would have no idea. Unless you did something with invincibility. So what am I doing here? So the idea comes from how the game reads inputs and specifically red Roman cancels. So Roman cancels in this game are performed by pressing three buttons, right? And depending on what state you're in, you will get a different type of Roman Cancel. So when you're doing nothing or dashing, you get the BRC. If you connect right away, you get the RRC, Red Roman Cancel. If you're doing it on Whiff or in Recovery, you get the Purple Roman Cancel. You have the Yellow Defensive Roman Cancel and Block Sun, right? But what was discovered is that if for some reason you're holding a button and you press two other buttons, you will never, ever, ever, ever Roman Cancel. But you can PRC still. So since you can do one and not the other, that means you can create a state where you can only do a PRC, which brings us back to this. So this works because the way I'm inputting my 2H, I am holding the button so that I will never get red Roman cancel. So the only time a Roman cancel will come out is if I do something that will make only the PRC activate, which in this case would be invincibility, right? And that's how we get this new technique that people are calling the PRC option select. As for how to perform it, the way you would do it is you'd press some button and then before that attack connects, you would press the button again and then hold it and then press two buttons so that the PRC can activate. So if you look on my inputs on the right, you will see I'm pressing H, then I'm pressing it again and then it's held. And that's how I'm getting past this restriction. The window to perform this is tight. Uh, from my understanding, it's a four frame window to get it, but that's bigger than instant blocking and people do that. So for sure, people will be going for this. So let's talk about places where it can be useful next. So the common one that people are talking about is for a meaty. So when you knock someone down, run over and you attack. So there are cases where you can't safe jump where you have to like run up. So using it here is pretty nice. So while the example I did off the throw knockdown, probably not realistic, you know, normally I'd be going for like a mix up or maybe like a safe jump or something, I did Tommy something. One thing that kind of happens to me a lot is this type of situation where I get like a knockdown here and then I have to run over and attack by myself. So normally in this type of situation, I would go and use Kabari because it's the only thing I think I could use to get like close while being safe, you know. If I want to be far away from a reversal, I would have to be further away sometimes and the spacing gets weird you never know if you're at the right spot or if you have enough time they might be able to move away but with this i can run over meaty and if they do a reversal i'm just good i'm just chilling 
and I can punish, keep my turn, whatever. So one place is really useful is not just like your standard meaty, because a lot of characters can just set up a safe jump or whatever. In awkward situations, you can try to use it as well, like that. The example I use here is one not all characters have to worry about, but some do, where there is some type of really small gap. So in this case, uh, this has a one frame gap in between the close slash and the 2H. Close slash attack level three, 16 frame block stun. 2H, 17 frames, right? So there's a little gap here. So this is a much higher return low than me using sweep. And I don't have to manually time it because it's 17 frames. So having this here in a spot helps out quite a bit because it helps me enforce my high low a little bit better. Biken is actually a case where if you can get the close slash, it's pretty good because hers is extra threatening because she gets a high low off it with meter as opposed to most characters where most characters run up, do close slash, and then they have an advantage, and then, okay, you would've been blocking anyway. Those two are probably the ones where you'll see this used the most, but they're probably like one or two other examples. So why are people freaking out about this? So people just don't like stuff that takes away options in some situations. For example, there is like the Street Fighter 4 had option select where if you did basically anything near somebody, you could like ultra them. And Guilty Gear Exert has an option select where you can move backward, like backdash or jump away from somebody if they block when you are in proximity guard. Both of these are proximity option selects, which are pretty ridiculous. Here's a video. This is from Rev2 um, of a technique using the proximity guard option select. SKD helped me come up with this, helped me flesh this out. So what you're gonna be seeing here is the idea is I'm using Secret Garden, this is really strong, to protect myself against Dead Angle, so that's the guard cancel, taking advantage of a state where I can move only if the opponent counterattacks me when I land, which is a pretty specific, pretty specific spot. So let's go through each clip. So here's the first clip. So this is just going to show combo air combo into knockdown with pin into secret garden so from here we're gonna set up the garden and here i'm gonna air dash and land this landing is really important when i land in older games there's a state called proximity block which has been a as we have discovered later on a very strong abusable state in some games where if an attack is coming your way and you're holding back the game will block for you but this is usually the lowest priority option over everything else because it's something that happens automatically. So in this state, in Exert and in Blaze Blue, you can input things like backdash and back jump and run, but you can't like attack, for example. So during this state, I'm inputting backdash. Then I'm hitting 2K. So here he just blocks, fine. So here I do the same thing again. Combo, knockdown, pin, secret garden, Air dash in, here I hit the 2k. An important thing to note too is I have an overhead option here which comes from this. So we're air dash here. So my timing, because I'm air dashing, someone who's competent at fighting games will see me air dashing and will generally stand up and this lines up with a second hit of Secret Garden. So I'm tricking my opponent into standing up, which will give me a rising jump K, which the orb will combo for me or a low. So here he gets hit by the 2K. Then in this sequence, so we'll see what happens if he tries to counterattack out of block stun, which is only one way, which is the guard cancel. So here he did it early and I ended up recovering and blocking. But here, this one, he does it with a different timing, slightly different timing, where because of when he does it, see how he does it when I'm like very early here? I backdash and then he gets hit and I'm able to continue my combo. This is using a, a very, very niche state, but it's really, really powerful. You also might recall this, which they had to nerf. So when the game came out, when you would do throw into PRC like this right away, if the throw connected, you wouldn't ever PRC. So you'd always get this on whiff, but then on successful throw, you would just get that. And this was extremely powerful when the game came out. So it's still in the game, but it's weaker. So it, it still has application in the game. People still use it, but only in specific situations. 
So the main thing that people are saying about this option select is that it's removing depth, it's re removing agency, you know, defense is already not strong in this game, which of course I disagree with. And I do understand them because mostly where it comes from is it's happening in a state where we're not used to this type of thing happening. So for the previous example, right here, I'm doing the same thing and it doesn't cost any meter but we're just used to it. Like this is a very common situation that comes up. And all you have to do to not die is block it and then offense will just continue as usual. Like it's just something you have to look out for, right? So in my opinion, I do think it's strong. It's very strong for a few reasons. So I, I think it benefits some characters more than others. Of course, strike throw characters like this because they have to attack you directly, very directly of their, their selections. So having this type of thing to help hedge bets against defensive options really does help them. It also has characters that have like some unique, strong situations like bike and close slash. So I I could just do close slash 2D and delay to 2D or close slash Yozan Sen, but 2H is more of a turn. So it lets me be a little bit greedier. Like on a hit, you're dead. Here, I'm good. But in my opinion, uh, I don't think it's game breaking really i do think they're going to nerf it because it's definitely an oversight i would say that you just it just happens that you can't red rc when you're holding a button they also nerfed the old throw prc which was really really hard to deal with the main thing is just like i don't know it's like one spot where you have to block slightly more i don't think that one is that crazy i don't think it's really like an auto win by any stretch of the word and it's also expensive it costs 50 meter so it depends it's a little bit rich get richer type thing in that some characters are really good at build like hc good at building meter bike and good at building meter but it costing more makes it so that you're not going to see it that much it's mostly going to be like a late game option and then finally, you can also mess this up. So unlike Throw PRC, which I think one of the strengths is that it was really, really, really easy. You basically could not ever mess this up. Uh, this has like a pretty awkward input and a small window. Not as small as IB, um, but unlike IB, which in where you miss it, there are very, very few examples of you missing instant blocks and dying or being put in a slightly worse situation. If you mess up this option select, then you're not in as good of a spot because you're spending meter. You're either spending meter or you're getting hit for not using it the right way. I mean, even in my recording of this video, I was messing it up. I just learned it pretty recently, but I was still messing it up. Will people get better at it with practice? Yes, but I just don't see it as like something that's super huge, ruins the game type thing. Also, it nerfs Leo slightly, which of course I'm a Leo hater, so that's a, a dub. Anything that hurts Leo is a dub. They're gonna patch it anyway. I don't think it's a big deal to freak out about it. I shouldn't say you're not gonna see anyone in the tower use this, but uh, I think it's gonna be limited to basically a tournament presence. Like mainly tournament players are gonna be going for this because they're going to use any single thing they could do to win for like people who just play the game for fun or just grinding the tower like all, all it takes is messing it up a couple times and that would be like oh i'm not worth i'm not willing to do this but yeah let me know how you guys feel i just wanted to just talk about this i wasn't actually going to make a video about this but i saw people saying like it ruins the game which i was pretty surprised to hear but hey you know whatever as usual, if you guys have any questions or comments, definitely feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you guys feel like it. And I'll see y'all next time. Peace out.